Good morning and welcome to worship with the congregation of the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel. We are glad you are here today. It is Trinity Sunday as we celebrate how we encounter God in scripture and in life as Father and Son and Holy Spirit, what we call the Holy Trinity, and we talk about three persons but one God. And so we will celebrate that a little today. We are celebrating that our camera is back, our usual camera is back to working, and so things will look almost the same, except that with the continued construction, our camera is in an odd place. And that means folks who are sitting on this side of the congregation here in the chapel, you'll notice those nice, those pretty blue squares on the backs of the pews. Don't sit in front of one of the blue squares unless you'd like your, the back of your head to star in today's sermon, because... We think that's where the camera will go. Um, so that's just the easy way to keep, keep everybody out of trouble. We'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper today, so if you are out in Zoom world, please make sure that you have a piece of bread or cracker to break and to share enough to share with however many are there with you and a little bit of juice or wine or, if necessary, water so that you can dip and you can take part in the Lord's Supper with all of us. If you are out in Zoom world, you obviously aren't going to bring your offering up to the plate at offertory time. And by the way, everybody here can bring their offering up the usual way and not worry about tripping on extra cords or knocking the camera over and knocking us out of Zoom, Zoom world today. So that's good. And, um, but if you're out in Zoom world, you can make use of the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app, V-A-N-C-O. If you Google it or look in your phone's app store, you'll find it. It's a free download. And um, then enter Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel, and it will help you to give electronically. Or you can just write a check, put it in an envelope, and mail it to 1212 Livingston Avenue in North Brunswick, 08902. Children are encouraged to have paper and pencils or crayons handy to draw during the sermon, and we'll talk about that a little more before the scripture lesson. So we begin with our gathering song, and today Chris, we're not beginning with Chris playing because um, we're going to sing this without him. He's, he can sing along, we'll let him. But remember, the, the Yoruba is wa 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 emimi mo, wa 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 alagbara, wa o wa o wa o. I'm going to sing it once in Yoruba, and then I'm going to invite all of you to sing in Yoruba with me, and then I'm going to invite everybody to stand as you feel able, and we'll sing it in English the last time through. Ready? Wa 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 emi mi mo, wa 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 lagbara, wa o wa o wa o. Ready? Wa 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 e mi mi mo, wa 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 lagbara, wa o wa o wa o. We're gonna do that a little another time because we're gonna be a little more awake this time, right? Wa 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 e mi mi mo, wa 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 lagbara, wa o wa o. Wow, please stand. Come, O oh Holy Spirit, come. Come, O oh Mighty Spirit, come. Come, come, come. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. God, brilliant ruler, your name echoes around the world. 
The praises of infants and toddlers drown out the noise of your enemies. I look at your huge creation, skies and moon and stars and planets. Then I look at my tiny self and wonder why you bother with us. Yet we are slightly less than the divine, crowned with glory and splendor. God, brilliant ruler, your name echoes around the world. Chris is going to play through the hymn and then we will all sing. Beloved in Christ, I greet you with grace and peace in the name of God, our Father, and our Master, Jesus Christ. Our God gives us everything we need, makes us everything we are to be. Please be seated for prayer. And let us confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven living out the promise of our baptism. Let us do all this beginning with the prayer that we find on our screens and in our leaflets. Let us pray. Generous God, you send us the spirit of courage, but we have been afraid. You send us the spirit of truth, but we cling to our illusions. You send us the spirit of healing, but we cannot let go of our hurts. Hear us as we confess. Holy Spirit of forgiveness, come to us again. Shake our hearts. 
Set our souls on fire with your love. Send us out into the world rejoicing in your power. We hold out to you all our particular burdens of guilt and sin, and we ask for your help. Hear these words that we may trust from the Apostle Paul. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory over sin and death through Jesus Christ our Lord. Believe this good news and live in peace. God has shown us what is good. And what does the Lord require? That we do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Danya se danya se danya me se danya se danya se danya me se if ya se oye nana do e do e so Danya se danya se danya me se danya se danya se danya me se danya se danya se danya me se if you say, oh, yeah, nana do, e do, e so. Danya se, danya se, danya me se. And so we also hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Let God's peace, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds as they rest in Christ Jesus. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another with a hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ. Hi. Peace. Peace of Christ. Peace. Peace of Christ. Peace. Peace, Lillian. Peace. Oh, it was yesterday? Peace. Same to you. Peace. Is that a ball you have in your pocket? I'm going to ask you to come up, up for the for the stuff before the scripture today, because we're going to do something with the ball, okay? Can you do that? Yep, you come up and bring the ball, okay? When I call. Thanks. Peace of Christ. Peace. Peace. Yep. <laughs> Danya se danya se danya me se danya se danya se danya me se if you say oh yeah na do e do e so Danya se danya se danya me se danya se danya se danya me se danya se danya se danya me se if you say oh yeah na do e do e so da na se da na se da nya me a se
as we get settled in some more. Again, it's time to um, talk about the Bible stories and get ready for sermons and scripture and all that good stuff. And so if you are a young child or if you are young at heart, I'm going to invite, I invite you to join in with this. And Ellie's going to come up and help me. Ellie already knows this, so this was a plan. Okay. Ellie, what have you got in your pocket? You've got a ball. You can come up too. You want to come up and play with the ball? You can come up. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. Okay, so this is a ball. Now. Yeah, hi. How are you? You can in a minute. Okay. Now, if I put the ball here, we're going to move over a little so they can see. If I put the ball here and let it sit on the table, what does it do? Ellie, what is it doing? Nothing. Nothing. It's kind of boring that way, isn't it? But what happens if I do this? Well, what happens if I do that and you just don't do anything? It falls on the floor. Okay, but what happens if I do this and you catch it? Let's see. Whoops. Almost. And if you do that, and I try to catch it, let's see what happens. So now we're having a whole lot more fun, and it's bouncing all over the place. You want to hold on to it? Yeah, okay. Oh, now, can you share it with me? And what happens if we do this? Let's see. Oh, it bounces a little bit. If the floor was, didn't have this nice carpet on it, it would bounce better. So maybe it'll bounce here. Oh, there it bounces. Good. So when we do things, when we interact with it, it does stuff, right? Okay, you can look at it again for a minute. But you're going to have to give it back to Ellie when, when it's time, okay? Now, no, maybe not. We'll see. Um, so when we interact, when, when we're doing things with it, it does, great things happen. Now today we keep talking about God being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all at once, right? Well, what do you think that's about? Is it kind of about them doing things together? It is a little bit. We're going to hear a Bible story today about creation. And we're going to hear about the Spirit of God stirring everything up. What? Yeah, we're made by God's hand. We're going to hear about the Spirit of God stirring things up. Because that helps us get, because when you stir things up, when you've got things moving around a lot, that helps people be creative rather than when they're all set in place and just sitting still. Like when the ball just sits there, not much happens. But when, when we're moving around with it and when we're doing things with our hands and when we're throwing it, things happen. And, the, and the, so the Spirit does that and... God is planning and the word of God is saying, do this, let there be light, let there be dry land, let there be water. Because all of those things are happening because they're all interacting with each other. And so God is in this whole relationship and always doing that. And God does that all the time. So what does that mean when we get to the end of creation on the last day when they say, the story says, okay, God rested from all the creating? Does that mean there's never going to be any more creating? No, there can still be more creating. God is always stirring things around. And the other part to listen for in our Bible stories today, God is stirring things around with us. Because we get to be part of it. So I want you to listen and think about that and think about how we all interact and God relates to us and relates to God's self because God wants to be in relationship with us and be part of things. Now, before we have Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer and at the end of the prayer, you know what we always say. Amen. amen. So the grown-ups are going to help me with the prayer and then you can help with the amen part. And you can help too if you want to just be loud, okay? Ready? Let's pray. Spirit of brooding and nurture, 
Open our imaginations to your good news. Spirit of understanding, open our hearts and minds to your word. Spirit of boldness and wonder, open us to your new life. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back and sit down. And now listen for a word from God in this story from the book of Genesis. In beginning, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the waters. And God spoke, let there be light. And light appeared. And God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day. And God named the dark night. And there was evening. And there was morning. If you all look, you'll, I forgot to remind you, but you guys have a part to do here. And there was evening. And there was morning. See, you got it. The first day. And God spoke. Let there be sky in the middle of the waters. Separate water from water. And God made sky. God separated the water under sky from the water above sky. And there it was. God named sky the heavens. And there was evening. And there was morning. The second day. And God spoke, let water beneath heaven gather into one place and let land appear. And there it was. God named the land earth. And God named the pooled water ocean. And God saw that it was good. And God spoke, let earth green up. Grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree. And there it was. Earth produced green seed-bearing plants of all varieties and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God spoke, let the lights come out. Shine in heaven's sky, separate day from night. Mark seasons and days and years, lights in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights the larger to take charge of day, the smaller to be in charge of night. And God made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night to separate light and dark. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God spoke, let, ocean, let the ocean swarm with fish and all sea life. Let birds fly through the sky above earth. And God created the huge whales and all the swarm of life in the waters and every kind and species of flying birds. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the ocean. Birds reproduce on earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God spoke. Let the earth generate life, every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. And God saw that it was good. And God spoke. Let us make humans in our image, make, make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for all the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, the cattle and yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. And God created human beings, created them in God's image, created them reflecting God's nature. God created them male and female and God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the earth. 
take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air and every living thing that moves over the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food. To all the animals and all the birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything God had made. And it was so good, so very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished God's work. On the seventh day, God rested from all God's work, from all the creating God had done. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Back in March, Stephen Colbert on his late show interviewed Steven Spielberg, the, the director, and John Williams, the composer, who often writes the music for Spielberg's movies. You may have seen the interview. Spielberg spoke about Williams' music be, becoming like an actor in his films. It was another character. It changed the movie. Williams spoke about talking to Spielberg and watching bits of film and immediately hearing what the music had to be. Even as they spoke, you could see how each man sparked new thoughts for the other, from the other's ideas. This is how the best creative teams work. They understand how their teammates think. They get into a rhythm after they work for a while and they urge one another on. It's like dropping Mentos candies into Diet Coke. And if you've never done that, go and, go and look on YouTube, but, or, unless you really want to clean, clean your kitchen from top to bottom, because it'll make a big mess. But it's really cool. You write in, in YouTube, Mentos and Diet Coke, and you'll see what happens when they drop one in a bottle of Diet Coke. And, they, and so they urge one another on. And in some teams, one channels the energy into making sure that there's results from all this spurring one another on. So you've got three parts. Think of triune God, whom we call Father, Son, and Spirit, as in many ways a creative team, like I was talking to the, to the children about. The Spirit keeps stirring the, sp the pot, inspiring. Genesis says brooding over the waters, but, you know, keeps moving them around, keeps them going. Don't let anything get too settled. The sun keeps speaking things into reality, prodding things to happen, including salvation. The creator has a plan for everything and molds and shapes everything to the plan. They have been together for eternity because they are all one. And they are constantly prodding each other to further creativity. We could do this, we could do this, we could do this. Now with that in mind, think about the creation story in Genesis. From a Christian perspective, we see three persons of God in that story. Though if you told the Genesis storyteller he was writing about a trinity, he would have thought you were nuts. So that was, that's just how we see it. We see the creator making sure that everything is going to plan. Some things on one day, some things on another, all in order. The spirit brooding over the chaos, making sure that all the potential is there, making sure nothing gets too settled. And the word of God speaking all of that potential into reality. Then at the end, God rests from creating. God doesn't stop. God rests. Now think about the fact that they've been together for eternity, not just since the beginning of creation, but from eternity. Think about how, how the scripture in Hebrew, and the way I read it today, by the way, in English even, doesn't say in the beginning. We all grew up being told it said in the beginning, and it doesn't. It says in beginning. This is not the story of all creation, but of that particular bit of creation that we all happen to live in. 
because there's more creating that comes after. There's creating that probably came before. God is constantly creating. The Trinity is a constant, eternal, creative relationship. And since the Word took on our flesh and shared the Spirit with us and got us adopted as God's children, we are now invited into that creative relationship. God can keep relating, keep creating through us as God relates to us. But to do that, we have to live into our faith. So listen for a word from God in this portion of Paul's letter, second letter to the Corinthians. Examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Don't you understand that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I hope that you will find out that we have not failed. We pray to God that you don't do anything wrong. Not because we want to appear to pass the test, but so that you might do the right thing, even if we appear to fail. We're rooting for the truth to win out in you. We couldn't possibly do otherwise. We are glad to be weak if it means that you are strong. Our ambition for you is true Christian maturity. Hence the tone of this letter, so that when I do come, I shall not be obliged to use that power of severity that God has given me, though even that is not meant to break you down, but to build you up. And that's about it, my friends. Be cheerful. Keep things in good repair. Keep your spirits up. Think in harmony. Be agreeable. Do all that and the God of love and peace will be with you for sure. Greet one another with a holy embrace. All the brothers and sisters here say hello. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. How do we do it? How do we pass the test? As daunting as Paul made it all sound, it is as simple as being kind and living in harmony. If we can accept life together with whomever God sends us, if we welcome and include everyone, then we live into that Christian maturity Paul describes, and the truth wins out in us. Welcome all God's children with a holy embrace. All God's children. Not the ones who look like us, not the ones who act like us, not the ones on some approved list. There's a, there's a wonderful internet meme going around where it's a picture of Jesus speaking to the disciples and he says, what part of love everyone do you not understand? Welcome all God's children with a holy embrace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with us all. God the Trinity interacting in and among us. God is forever creating. And we are called to be part of it. Beginning here at the table. Christ makes the Spirit present in bread and cup. Bits of God's creation which we share the relationship becomes part of who we are. And we become part of the relationship by relating to everyone, loving everyone, as they are, as we are, always. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris is going to play through the psalm, and then we will all sing. Stand as you feel comfortable standing, please.
Now let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Again, I welcome everybody to worship as we, and we are now getting ready to share our joys and concerns before we share our offerings and then share in the Lord's Supper. So um, if you are out in Zoom world, this is the time to go ahead and unmute. And if you are on a phone, that you can do that by pressing star six. And while everybody is unmuting, I'm going to um, just share a few announcements as we get ready. Um, Starting on Thursday, I will be in Iowa for six days at the RCA General Synod, um, where I was supposed to just be a person on the fringes, and this week found out, no, as long as you're going to be there, we're going to make you do all the work. Um, but um, I'll be at General Synod. Barbara Meyer will be on call if there are any pastoral needs and she can get a hold of me and we can do other things as we need to if something happens. So her number is in the bulletin and was sent out in the Saturday email too. So, and if you don't get the Saturday email, by the way, and would like to send your email address to office at presbyterianNewBrunswick.org and we'll get you added to that list. So next Sunday, we will have worship. We'll be here. There's a worship that is all ready to go. There are folks who have already said that they could help with leading worship next Sunday, and um, we can always add in a couple of other helpers if somebody else would like to be part of that. You don't have to, you don't have to write the sermon. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You just have to have a part and read and lead. Um, if you're interested in doing that, stick around at the end of worship today, and we will get some parts assigned so that everybody knows what's going on. And then on the 18th, I will be back, and we'll have worship here again. And then on the 25th, we'll have worship, and on that last Sunday of the month, we'll have our session meeting for the end of June and to take us through July and August. 
as long as everything goes well. We're collecting spaghetti sauce this month, and so you can bring that in. We're asking for people to not bring it in glass jars. It can be in cans. It can be in plastic jars, but you know, these jars and cans and all get moved around a lot, going from here down to Bayard Street and put on shelves and handed to people. And so it's much better if it's not something that if it accidentally slips and falls, it goes crash. So please not glass jars. But, and if you have any other non-perishable foods, go ahead and bring those and that'll be just fine. And also you'll see a note in the bulletin about October. Saturday, October 7th is North Brunswick's Heritage Day. And it, so as we're new in the neighborhood, we're hoping to be able to take part. So be thinking about that and pencil out that day and think about whether you could be at a booth that we'll be hosting for a couple of hours on that Saturday and kind of block out the day so we can be ready for it. Okay. Um, is there anybody we need to be remembering, especially in our prayers this week? Helen? Oh. Okay, so let's keep Itai in our prayers. I'm sorry that she's been ill. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. My dad's friend died. The funeral was yesterday. Okay. So, William's friend, and let's keep that family in our prayers in their time of loss. What did you say? Two sons. Two sons and has two sons. Okay. This was the taxi cab driver. Yes. Yeah. That we had remembered before. I realize. Okay. And also remembers a family of the councilwoman who was um, murdered uh, last month. Uh, the perpetrator has been arrested. And okay. so Okay, so keep, it's a councilwoman in Saraville yes, who was murdered. Um, and um, so keep her family in your prayers and that whole community. They've caught the person they believe did it. Yes. But, so there are still many the steps still between this, oh, a member at her church. So let's keep her in prayers. Or her family. Anybody else? India. Oh yes, the people in India. Family, uh, the people who were victims of the train crash. That was very serious. Um, 288 people. 275 now they're saying. And a thousand injured, so still far too many. So let's keep all those people and their families and that community in our prayers. Sam. Pray for peace on this. Prayers for peace, yes. Always. Anybody else? Martha? Okay. Um, also, prayers and guiding, providing our discernment in ways good in the world, in ways sourced from evil in the world. Um, because Paul admonishes us to walk in the light. Thank you. And so prayers for Martha's granddaughter, Lily, who 
just had a birthday? Yesterday. Had a birthday yesterday. Um, and prayers for discernment in the world. And prayers also Thanksgiving for my grandson Isaiah. Isaiah had a birth, is having a birthday today, though we celebrated yesterday because Grandpa had to be back here um, today. But um, so Isaiah is is the one who's eight today, and Calvin is the one who we were praying for a lot last year. Calvin is, by the way, doing very well, and the doctor has officially declared he is no longer on that scale where we say, okay. He's this old, except that because he's a preemie, he's really this old. He is completely caught up, and he's just the age he is. So he is doing very, very well. Ah, the prayers for the Aja family, for, for Bassie and Lawrence and Cornelia and Yasmin. Anybody else? Anybody out in Zoom world have prayers to share? Pastor James, this is Carol. Hi, Carol. Uh, I would, if you would pass this along to the congregation, thank everyone, please, for their gifts, for the Pentecost offering. And if they were not, unable to give last week, we still have envelopes, special envelopes out there, and they can put their offering in and give it today. Thank you. Okay. Um, Carol says, thank you everyone who's already brought in your gifts for Pentecost offering, um, but we can still receive some and there are envelopes here someplace. And if you give electronically through um, that system, the Venco system, you can just designate it for Pentecost offering and it will get to the right place or just write Pentecost on the bottom of a check and we will make sure it gets to the right place. Okay, anybody else? Lillian. Oh yes, How, prayers for Mimi and her grandchildren. They are looking for a place to live. So prayers that they find something soon. Anybody else? Yeah, prayers to God for adding another year to my daughter's uh, Margaret. Okay, so prayers of Thanksgiving for Margaret on her birthday. So lots of good birthdays, and we thank God for the gift of lots of lives. Okay. Anybody else? Hear these words from the Psalms. What shall I return to God for all God's bounty to me? I will give what I have promised in the presence of all God's people. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our God. Thank you. 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Chris is going to play through the, the hymn, and we will remain seated to sing. We'll stand later. Don't worry. Come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved, and free, the life of Jesus to recall in love laid down for me. In love laid down for me, I come with Christians far find as all are fed the new community of love in Christ's communion bread in Christ's communion bread as Christ breaks bread and bids us share each proud division ends the love that made us makes us one and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right in our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal and triune God. You spoke the world into being. Your word became flesh in Jesus Christ. By your spirit, you made us your people. When we were lost in sin, you found us, sending us your prophets and even your own son. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. O oh, holy, holy, holy God of angel army might, your glory fills the earth and skies, hosannas in the high, through all the highest high. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name with God's light. We sing Hosanna loud and long, Hosannas to the high, Hosannas to the high. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born of Mary, he came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. He forgave our failures, healed our hurts, and gave himself in utter sacrifice for those he loved. After three days, you raised him from the dead, that we might never die. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and cup, and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we pray for our world and for all the people in it, especially for those in places of conflict or danger this day. For the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia, people of Syria and Sudan, the people in India who are victims of the train crash or families of the victims or in that community feeling terrible devastation and loss. We pray for those women and men who lay down their lives for the safety of brothers and sisters and neighbors wherever they might be. And we pray for those who lead us 
our president and representatives, governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and for those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around the world, that whether they profess your name or not, they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we pray for those especially in need of nurture this day. For those who are ill or infirm, especially for Bassey, for Lawrence and Cornelia and Yasmin as they take care of her, for Etai, for Mimi and her grandchildren, as they look for a new home, for those who are celebrating, we give thanks for those celebrating new phases in their lives, especially Margaret and Lily and Isaiah. We pray for those who mourn, especially the family of the councilwoman in Saraville who was murdered, the family of William's friend who was murdered, we pray for all those whose names we remember in our hearts and for those whose names we don't know yet. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we pray for your holy church, for this congregation gathered here and all of the ministries in which we share, especially the Pentecost offering. For our sisters and brothers in and around North and New Brunswick, for the churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries, for everyone who proclaims your good news wherever they might be. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice and proclaiming our mystery, the mystery of our faith. Oops. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we, we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we might be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come and gather around the table. If you have trouble standing for the whole time, Find a place where there's a seat and sit there and we'll make you part of the gathering.
Our Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will share as usual by intinction. I'll come around with the bread and give everyone a piece. Ellie will be right behind me with the cup. Go ahead and dip your bread in the cup and then immediately partake. Ready? The body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you, Beatrice. The body of Christ for you, Helen. The body of Christ for you, Amelia. The body of Christ for you. Behave yourself. The body of Christ for you. Keep an eye on him. The body of Christ for you. 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 and blood of Christ for you. Please return to your seats for prayer. She's just going downstairs. She'll be okay. And the hymn that you see will be the last part of our prayer, so I'll get us started. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, you have filled us, gathered around your table, filled us with the body and blood of Christ, filled us with your presence. Spirit, you have filled us with your grace. And now we stand, please. The Spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such friendship better known. While live among us here, alive among us here, together met, together bound by all that God has done, we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one, the love that makes us one. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.